What's up, YouTube? Southern Comic Geek coming to you with scissors. No, another unboxing video. Got a bunch of packages in today. Uh, I think most of these are from IG Sales, which I seem to be doing a lot more of those now. I don't know if it's ease of use or um, wanting to let my collection grow organically, if that makes sense. So, in other words, I'm not going specifically for something to find it on eBay as much. I still do it at times, but I don't do it specifically as much as what I used to. So like on IG, if I see something, I said, yep, that's on my want list or that's something that I want, then I'll get it. But decidedly going towards um, something as you can do on eBay, I have not been doing. So um, just been finding a bunch of deals on that. And uh, hopefully everybody's doing well out there. We do live in a crazy world. I hope that's no news to anyone. Sometimes it's more crazier than others. But uh, hopefully you and yours are staying safe out there. And that's my dog, if you ain't guessed that. All right, so. Um, okay. Well, it looks like you threw in an extra book because I didn't order a Green Lantern. Um, never really gotten to Green Lantern, tried a bunch of times, just never got into there. There's a couple story arcs that uh, you didn't have to be a Green Lantern aficionado to get into um, that I've read, and they were okay, like when the Jeff Johns era and stuff, but uh, overall I haven't really gotten to Green Lantern, so he must have threw that book in there for me. Appreciate that. And then got the Gambit Gold Edition, so he had an offer or a price on there and I said hey I'll claim it for this I think it was about ten dollars less and uh, he said yes that's fine uh, it was funny because probably five minutes later or something like that uh, somebody says well uh, I'll give you the price for the whole deal and so instead of him reneging because he had already told me that that was fine uh, he did tell me uh, tell them that um, hey if this guy doesn't pan out then yeah you can do that so looks okay and uh, these are hard to especially with the uh, gold magic there but you can see that corner bend right there and then the spine there's a couple of indentions you know and it's hard because you can't really press that uh, so this is an interesting book uh, it's a birthday book so shout out to Big Will who just did a video on his channel um, about birthday books and I had just ordered this book uh, so this is uh, pretty neat because this is Miss Marvel so uh, Chris Claremont and some other uh, legends that's John Romita Jr. right there which that was back when his work resembled his dad's work more than what it does today uh, but uh, or he might have just done the inks on that anyhow either way um, th so this is my birthday book. So this is in May, uh, August of 1978. The interesting part is that this is issue 19, which is my birthday. So August the 19th, 1978. Um, not generally a Miss Marvel fan. I was a bigger Miss Marvel fan back in uh, this time, uh, as opposed to the way she is now. Uh, but it, hey, it's got Captain Marvel on the front, the real Captain Marvel. And uh, so there you go. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, got some figures right here. So what you been picking up? Um, Marvel is not back in full swing yet. Doesn't seem that DC has been. Um, I know that last week they uh, released Amazing Spider-Man, which used to be on my pull list. And that was one that I decided to let go in favor of uh, other books or older books and so almost picked up a huge book last night um, almost only counts in horseshoes hand grenades and nuclear warheads but uh, interesting nevertheless and so strictly comics was having an auction on like as he is prone to do on Sunday nights and I was on that auction and first edition comics which also has a YouTube channel threw up uh, Batman number eight. That's right. Batman number eight. So it was a cool infinity cover. Certainly an old cover and uh, old book in 1943 if I remember correctly. And um, 
so I was uh, bidding on it and um, I was bidding on it and uh, thought I was gonna take it away and somebody sniped me at the last minute um, actually there's two people and then that third person was the one that actually ended up getting it so um, I'm glad that I didn't play along <laughs> so to speak in other words I wanted it I would love to have had it in my collection however because I've been buying so many other big books lately. I mean, I haven't been long bought Giant Size X-Men 1, Hulk 180, 181, the Foom magazines and the like. If you've been watching my videos, you know what I'm talking about. And I guess this is a pretty good segue into the fact that if you haven't already, be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also the bell notification so that when I drop videos like this, you are one of the first people to know. But uh, so if you've been watching those other videos, you know that I've been buying a lot of those big books. And so I didn't want, if I want to buy it, I don't want to have buyer's remorse going, man, I like it, but I really re wish I would have waited. Um, so I would have been okay with the price of 400. I would not have been okay with the price that it went up from there. So there you go. All right. So this is another IG uh, sale. So we've got a plethora of comic book taste. And so we got the pink variant of young blood number two. Um, got this one for I think three bucks and so it was still relatively cheap uh, I've noticed it's been spiking up since Comic Tom added it to his list and since uh, Profit has gotten a director on the set so I actually like the back side of this which is the first appearance of Shadowhawk better um, but hey and this is the pink variant I've seen CLZ listed it as the second print so I don't know if it's a pink variant or second print or what uh, and then we got Wolverine at number six in his patch persona. That's Bloodscream. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, this is the first full series of Wolverine. And an iconic uh, Jim Lee cover of Wolverine. And uh, that's Wolverine number 27. X-Force number one annual. And so uh, decided to go back and get the annuals. To complete those series that I have all of, and X Force is one of those series. Uh, Wolverine number 22, John Byrne cover. I remember buying this comic back in the day, which it was kind of messed up. I think it had some water damage, the one I originally had, and um, for like a buck, it was in a dollar bin. I thought I'd really score it big. Uh, X Men number 41. Uh, variant edition this is back when Jubilee was a vampire um, they went through all that rigmarole and she finally settled in as a vampire only to uh, have Quentin Quire as a uh, Phoenix Force uh, and um, person uh, sacrifices Phoenix Force to uh, take away that said vampirism that was kind of the easy way to write it out of the script, right? Uh, but yeah, so that was back when she was a vampire. Be sure if you read those uh, stories back when Jubilee was a vampire, what'd you think about that? Leave those in the comments. Uh, picked up some Batman. Uh, been kind of slowing down on the Batman runs because I've been kind of slowing down on uh, like a bigger run like I did with the Uncanny X-Men stuff. Been filling in with variants, getting some big books and that type of thing. Uh, but I couldn't pass these up. They were five bucks. And so, yeah, they are the 532, but more importantly, they are the DC Universe logo. So, didn't have any of those. Um, 509, same thing. And so, these not only filled in holes in my Batman run, um, it also was the DC logo uh, variants. So that was pretty cool. They were only five bucks a piece. So I thought that was pretty cool. I know I'm seeing, I think Rob Worst had uh, just did a video not too long ago uh, talking about DC Universe uh, variants. I guess I didn't realize it was a thing back in the day. And, and you know, it's kind of like newsstand. Um, and tell me if you think anything different in the comments below. But, you know, back in the day, it, just, it didn't matter. Uh, you know, the comic was the comic. Well, as things progress and newsstands become became a thing of the past, or people realize, like, man, you know, the DC Universe thing's pretty pretty neat, and there was only so many of them. 
probably less of the original than the original run. Hey, let's go for that. And so it became a became a deal, whereas it wasn't really a big deal back then. Well, at least I didn't remember it being a big deal. Because I was buying at the comic shop and largely was buying it off the newsstand. Of course, back in the newsstand days, it was, it was fun to go to all the different places because there was just so many more places you could go and get comics back then. Um, and so you had a wider variety. At least that was my experience. The only bad thing was that you had to get there before everybody else did because then they would bend the comics down and it drove me insane so uh you know oh man there's that series i wanted it's bent and then two the other thing you could do back then was get a lot more comics for your dollar i mean they were a dollar a piece or a dollar fifty and so today they're four bucks and so even when they got to two dollars you can get twice as many comics back then as what you can today so Anyway, all right. Why in the world? Well, anyway, if you want to squeeze two. All right, pull tabs, people. Pull tabs. Makes everybody's life easier. Especially the person opening up the comics. All right. Got some trashy boards and bags, but that's okay. Uh, Star Wars number two. Uh, this is a reprint, uh, but uh, number two, nevertheless, Planet of the Vampires, Atlas Comics, number one. This is Larry Hama. Um, it's funny because it says Adams. I'm wondering if that's Neil Adams because it kind of looks like his stuff. But I was looking on a uh, key collector app and uh, noticed this deal because I was looking at Larry Hama stuff because you can associate it with like a character or a writer, an artist, I was looking at his stuff, and I think it said that this was either an early work or like first published work, so that was pretty cool there. Uh, Avengers 263, so this is when they decide, Marvel decided that Jean Grey was not indeed dead, uh, and so took away some of the um, repercussions of the Dark Phoenix saga and brought her back, and so it was in Avengers, and... Um, that they find the cocoon, and then in Fantastic Four, they find out uh, she's inside of it and find out what the Phoenix Force did and why uh, things happened the way they did. So, um, so yeah, so we've got this right here. New stand and the error variant, as well as, I already had this one, but they were sold as a pair. This was the one that I was interested in getting. Pretty cool. And then this was one that uh, one of the ones that this particular seller had for sale. This is the second appearance of Sabretooth. So there you go, Two Brothers Comics, uh, Dustin. In particular, uh, there's your Sabretooth appearance for today. And uh, he wanted 10 bucks. I got him off of that. I think I paid five or six for it. Uh, and then also Cable and X Force, Scotty Young variant. And so. Uh, wasn't a big fan of that particular set of Cable and the X-Force, and they just kind of killed it off, and it's like, wait a minute, what just happened? Um, it, it really wasn't done well, in my opinion, but guess what? They didn't ask me, as they are oft not going to ask the people that actually read the books. you think it would be common sense for them to say, hey, you read my books and you pay big money for my books. What do you think about my books? But they don't. I guess the only thing you can do is vote for go vote with your pocketbook, and even with that, to a certain extent, they don't listen to that. But um, but uh, yeah, so in that particular run, for those of you who might not be familiar with it, um, things go along. Cable's losing the like use of his arm, which really didn't make no sense to me, because when Cable was originally intended, uh, his arm was more cybernetic in nature. It wasn't the fact that the organic virus had taken over his arm. It was more like uh, he was a cyborg. Uh, even up into the early issues of X-Force uh, 25, I believe, is the hologram cover where he takes on Magneto. And uh, he's basically just a cyborg, even even up to the extinction of uh, um, Executioner Song, rather, uh, when he's fighting uh, with uh, Strife. It still largely is Strife, the real child of uh, Madeline Pryor and Scott Summers and Cable just a cyborg or what. It went until after that that they kind of cleared that up, but 
uh, in this one, he, he's losing, which didn't make any sense to me. Well, then uh, towards the end, or it might have been like the next to last issue, uh, Hope Summers uses Phoenix Forks and heals him, takes away his stuff. And then it, it's like he's got it back, what what happened. So I, I don't know. It's a dark day in the new world. Brian Michael Bendis was in his ilk or not doing a very good job. Um, so this is from uh, Matt at M and M Comic Sales. Um, sorry, I didn't give a shout out to the other IG sellers that I purchased from um, because I can't remember your names. But I have dealt with Matt before, and he's always good to package things up and get things out and uh, hold it if I want to and go ahead and send it if I want to. So um, I will give him another shout out that he probably runs and he's only a one man show. He probably runs the of at least I seen the uh, most organized uh, auction on Instagram. And I understand with Instagram, things are showing up. You can't just stop the video and go back, kind of like what you can with YouTube. Um, and so, um, okay, uh, can't like you can with YouTube, um, but the uh, full tabs. Amazing. Okay, I was like, what? So it says, thanks for your support, Jason. And so threw in another book, X, Major X, number six. Some Rob Lotto goodness there. And then this is the one in 100 uh, Wolverine Weapon X uh, Adam Hubert sketch variant. I just popped into the auction and said, hey, let me buy this. I had already bought this book right here. I'm fixing to unwrap and show you, which is a slap. It's a big Batman book, so it suspends there. But uh, yeah, so he's pr he probably runs the most organized Instagram auction. Uh, he's just got kind of a steady flow of things, throwing some buy nows in there, got the auctions flowing um, of most of the other sellers I see. Um, some of the bigger, more well-known uh, sellers, which I'm not going to call their names. I have bought stuff off of their uh, auctions as well, so nothing against them. It's just like everybody's claiming, they're not seeing it, they're giving something to somebody else. Um, I was on one, that auction right there, and uh, bought a um, giant size X-Men number one. Well then like the next thing came up was uh, Spider-Man is 32, the September the 11th issue, and it was a newsstand, so I said, well, I'm gonna pick that up. And so I got it. Well, he gave it to somebody else. Well, somebody else, uh, who dat, as a matter of fact, uh, spoke up in the uh, Instagram feed and said, hey, uh, that he had had it. Talking about me. And uh, they said, oh, yeah, well, we see that now. Do you want to take it? I said, no, just give it to the other guy. But it's things like that. And I know some of it can't be avoided. I just kind of think that if they had more hands on deck, that it could kind of flow better, especially when you, I keep mentioning Matt. Um, comes up with what he does by himself. So this is Batman 189. First appearance of, yes, that's right, you guessed it, the first Civil Age appearance of Scarecrow. So it's a 3.5. And it's got the uh, checkerboard. Uh, this is during the time that DC was doing that. And so this is one that I was uh, been wanting to get and happened to go. Well, I think he showed a preview of what he was going to be offering that night And I saw this happened to get in and got uh, Got it. So this is some 12 cent goodness right there and Based on the spine it looks like it's beat to Hades uh, Probably wouldn't do any good to crack it open and uh, Try your look at it um, I got a as soon as I get through with this, this thing is going into the slab uh, stack because yesterday I had some laying on my one laying on my desk and I bumped it and it fell off and sure enough it hit that side and cracked it. 
So, uh, interesting. Build these Aurora hobby kits of your favorite TV shows. And uh, Superman, Hulk, Spider-Man, Superboy. All these on the back here. And uh, 98 cents. Buying models for 98 cents. Uh, the days. For my time. Uh, that was 1966. Uh, this issue was uh, printed and distributed in February of 67. So, been a minute. And first Silver Age appearance of the Scarecrow, Jonathan Crane. Uh, this is a Carmine Infantino and a Joe Gilliel, Giella. Did I pronounce that right? And it seems like he's still alive. Leave comments in, uh, down below if you think he is. But it seems like he's the guy that's still alive and does shows. If he is, I might crack this open to get this puppy sign. So we'll see. Well, that's all my uh, auctions for today. Uh, auction winnings rather so uh, leave comments down below what you think of uh, my pickups what are you picking up what are you collecting uh, be interested to know leave the comments down below as always I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch videos uh, like this one as I journey into mystery uh, so to speak with my comic book collections and uh, until next time keep reading and keep collecting adios